What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. I'm in this video, this is part two of my video about modeling this covered bridge with a reference image. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So probably what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to come in here and model some trusses. And so in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide this front face because it's kind of in, in the way. So we went ahead and hid that front face. Well now what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and first of all we're just going to model up a little bit of a canvas. So what we're going to do is we'll just model up to the center of one of these points and then uh, we'll just kind of draw a line across this face. And across this face and then we'll draw a line straight up and down from our midpoint. That didn't seem to work very well. You may have to kind of... Oh, that's what we'll do. We'll just kind of split this line over here because you can see how what this is is this is a full line over here and then a partial line over here so we'll just draw a line to the outside to kind of split this then we can draw something straight up and down from our model and you could probably do this with guides too um, honestly I've probably picked up some bad habits from modeling this way um, and I just usually do this by actually drawing in geometry but what we're gonna do is first of all I'm going to just kinda do an offset to get me started. So we'll call this a 12 inch offset on this one side. And if you remember, we're gonna do the same thing where we model one side and then the other. And then we're just gonna kinda make the assumption that our truss, I'm just kinda making this up because you can't really see what the truss looks like from the image. Um, but we'll go ahead and draw this down six inches. We'll draw this up six inches. I'm just basically assuming this is framed with some kind of 12 inch lumber in here so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of rough something out I'm gonna use the perpendicular inferencing in order to come in here and draw these lines kind of perpendicular to each other and I'm just using the move tool to kind of move these back and forth and you can kind of fill this in but basically what we're doing is we're just coming in here and we're just kind of roughing out what we think this truss is going to look like. So, and then I'm going to delete out the extra. And maybe we'll add a little extra piece right here. We'll see how that looks. Just to make it look a little more structural. There we go. And then... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I make a copy of this using the move tool. I'm gonna flip it and then I'm gonna move it back. So now it's in here and it's symmetrical. And you can see how that gives me a little too, I'll have to move this over. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to select these lines and move them over about six inches because you can see, you can see how when I put this together, these two center point, these two center pieces are too thick. So that's why I'm moving these over about six inches. And then I'll just kind of extend this. And then I'll just manually draw this in. So you move this over here using the move tool, you'll flip it and then you'll move it back. And when you move it back and you erase out these center line, then these are all the same thickness. So now what we're gonna do is, for the sake of what we're doing here, we're gonna go ahead and call this good. You might be able to do a little bit more with kind of detailing out these connections and that kind of thing. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this whole thing by double clicking on it. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna make it a component and I'm just gonna call it truss. And remember, since we're repeating this, we want it to be a component. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to make some copies. So I'll activate the move tool, I'll tap the control key, and then I'll move that back here, and then I'll type in times seven and hit the enter key. And you can see how that created seven copies of this truss. And you can see how the truss doesn't have any thickness right now. So all we're gonna do is we'll just double click in there and uh, we'll just kind of give that a little bit of thickness. So, and all I'm doing is I'm using the thickness of these posts as kind of an assumption of how thick these trusses are going to be. That may make them a little bit too thick, but we'll go ahead and use that for right now. So now we've got our trusses modeled in here. We've got our base. 
we can come in here and we can unhide our front face and we're just going to go ahead and come in here we're going to give our front face a little bit of thickness so we're just going to use the push pull tool to uh, extrude this probably about we'll call it six inches for right now so we'll just give it a little bit of thickness and then if you look at our image we've got some white trim here on the bottom so what we're going to do is we're going to use the offset tool to offset that uh, probably another six inches or so and then all you're going to do is you're just going to continue this along on each edge to kind of close it off because as you can see in the image there's only trim on the bottom so and then we'll just erase out this extra stuff so and remember since we modeled the back side as a component the changes we made on the front side show up on the back side as well and we'll come back in here in a minute and use textures to kind of detail this out so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to detail out our cross timbers all right so for simplicity's sake in this model what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to come in here and i'm going to model the structural framing a little bit different on these edges so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click inside one of my side walls and then i'm just going to draw a line from this corner point or the, the midpoint of this corner to the midpoint of the other corner. And so once I've done that, what I can do is I can come in here and I can use the perpendicular inferencing. So you can see how if I move my, if I move my mouse, it'll give me an option to go to perpendicular right here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I'm gonna draw a three inch line this way and then a six inch line the other way. And then I'll just do what I did before where I take this line, I select it, and I kind of move it um, using, or I use the move tool in copy mode to make a copy of it each way. And so what that does is you can see how that gives me my kind of general shape. And then all I have to do is I just have to come in here and just draw this in. So that I get a face and then I can come in here and I can erase out all these guidelines that I created. And then all we're going to do is we're going to push pull this one way and also the other way so that it fills this shape in or so that it fills this space in. And then we're just going to right click on it and we're going to go ahead and we'll make this a component and we'll call this diagonal brace. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this using the move tool. And depending on how you want this to look, I guess you could probably just make all of these oops diagonal kind of the same way i'm going to try to flip these in place so that you get them kind of moving back and forth and then i'm just going to select these i'll just use the move tool again and i'm always inferencing off this kind of center point of these posts and then I'm just moving those two and then I'll type in times two or times three. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase out this end piece for right now. So now we've got kind of our diagonal framing and we could get as detailed as we wanted to in this. You could come back in here and you could model out the kind of little framing that goes along these edges here. And I may do that, but I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. So what you've got is you've got your base face here. You've got your structural supports. Um, you've got your roofing, you've got all those different parts and pieces. And then what you could do is you could just come in here and you see how we have our base, our base ground plane. Well, basically what you do is you would come in here and you just kind of detail out where your road would go. So in this case, my road is going to run along the inside of these walls. So I would apply a road texture here. And then I would have a little bit of a sidewalk along here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the guide tool to give me kind of an idea of what a sidewalk here would look like. Um, or not even necessarily a sidewalk, but just kind of a path along this edge. But I'm going to go ahead and figure that's kind of narrow and figure that's about four feet. No, not even four feet wide. We'll go ahead. So we'll figure this is about from this edge to this edge. So you'd have a little green belt here and then um, not very big. If anything, if we wanted this green area to be a little bigger, we could either 
just make this not quite as wide so we can figure this is four feet wide and then or we could move this out a little bit All right, so now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna model the fence along this face. And we're gonna do the same thing we've done before where we model everything using components. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna draw a corner post. And in this case, we're just gonna call this a four inch by four inch rectangle. We may make it a six by six actually. So six comma six. And then we're just gonna push pull that up probably about, we'll call it four feet. And so that's gonna make up our kind of corner piece here. And if you look at the image, these are kind of decorative so they don't square off at the top. They have a little point to them. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of draw our face in here using a line tool and then you can just erase out this little extra whoops, bit over here. So, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a component. So we'll select this whole thing, we'll right click, we'll say make component and we'll just call this fence post. So now that we've created our post here um, that's in here as a component, if you look at this image, this has little uh, wood pieces that kind of stick out that uh, these diagonal supports kind of hook into. And this actually is kind of nice because you can see how the same thing happens on the other side. So all we're gonna have to do is model that and then, um, and then just flip it is all we're gonna have to do. So what we're gonna do is we'll just come in here and we'll just draw a wood extension piece. And we'll say that this is gonna extend, we'll call it 32 inches. And uh, it's just gonna be the wood, the, the width of our piece in here. And now that I look at that, that's even a little bit too long. So I'm gonna move that probably, we'll move it six inches back this way. And we'll go ahead and give it a little bit of depth. I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of, uh, we'll just give it some depth up. We'll just call it two inches thick. And then we'll go ahead and make that a group. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll draw this kind of diagonal piece. So, and the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna come in here and we're just going to basically we're just gonna pick a point um, in here and probably I'm gonna start higher than this midpoint a little bit. Um, probably I'll have the bottom of this come to the midpoint and then uh, I'll just have this come up and we'll figure we're gonna do this also with a six by six post that's kind of cut off. And so the way that we're gonna do this is I drew a line up six inches and then now I'm just drawing these kind of perpendicular pieces and then we'll do the same thing where we'll use that perpendicular inferencing in order to draw this about six inches thick. So In this case, we may just want this to be more four inches thick. So I'm just gonna move this until my mouse, or until this line kind of turns purple. Then I'm gonna type in four inches. So I'm drawing a perpendicular line here. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move the, use the move tool to copy these two lines. So I'm gonna click on them once to select them. I'm gonna tap the M key and I'm gonna move these and basically I'm gonna use the lines this creates as kind of my inference points in here. So what that means is I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of this in using where these points kind of intersect. So as you can see, what I did is I just came in here and I just erased the line where it intersects down here and I'm just kind of filling this in. And So what you can do is you can just draw a line across here. And then just fill that face in. And depending on how you look at this, you might think that this is a little bit too thick. If you did wanna make this a little thinner, all you'd have to do is just use the push-pull tool. 
in order to make those a little bit smaller. So I just push pulled those an inch in each direction so it's, so it's still centered in here. Then I'm just gonna triple click in that and I'm gonna make that a group. And then I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna right click on it, we're gonna make it a component and we'll call this complete fence vertical. So now I've got that piece and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a copy of it and I'll just move it out here for now and I'm just gonna use the scale tool to flip it in place so just activate the scale tool by tapping the S key and you can uh, flip this by clicking on one of these points and holding or by clicking on this point right here and holding the control key that'll flip it in place and just dragging it until it goes to a negative one and now we're gonna move this across and what I'm gonna do is first of all I'm gonna put this right here um, so I'm going to line this up so there's no gap. That way I can move this and kind of select the gap that I want. So in this case, I'm going to say probably I'm just going to move this backside so that it lines up with this line right here. So that gives me a pretty decent width on my path that's going to run along the side here. And that will also allow us to kind of move this line out and give us more of a green area in here. Um, but the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to create our fence pickets. And so this is one of the powers of component modeling is since these are modeled as a component, you can see how if I come in here and I change one of these, they're, all, they're both gonna change. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that to create our fence line. And so the way that we're gonna do that is, whoops, Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a guideline in here and I'm gonna divide it. So I'm drawing a line from the center here to right here and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say divide. And what that's gonna do is that's going to give me some guide points that I can use in order to model my fence post. Um, because what I want is I want one post up above this center point and one down below. So what I did is I right clicked on this line, I select divide and I divided it into four segments. You can see how that gives me one above and one below. And then I can come in here and it's important to actually be inside this component when you start doing this. But all we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw in and we're gonna rough out the face of our fence post or the size of our fence post. And you can see how when I do this, then it's showing up in the other component as well. And the nice thing about this is what you can do is you can select this square and then use the move tool and use the center point as kind of an inference point because this line, even though it's outside this group, is still showing up as something that you can uh, move your mouse over. And I'm gonna use the move tool to create a copy of this. So, and I'm gonna move that down on this post or this point right here. And so now what I can do is I can push pull each one of these and we can figure out what we want our distance to be. In this case, I think I'm just gonna call it eight feet for simplicity. And I'm just gonna push pull those out. And I'm probably gonna take each one of those and make them a group just so they're not merging with the other geometry. But you can see how now I've got that in here and I can go back and erase out my guideline that I just drew. I don't need that anymore. And then now the cool thing about this is what you can do is you can just repeat them. So you can come in here, you can select the two and you may go ahead and group those as well or you could call them a component either way. But all you have to do now is you can just use the move tool to copy this across so all I'm doing is I'm using the move tool, I'm clicking on this point and I'm tapping the control key. Now if you hold shift and move your mouse so that it's over this point, then that'll make a copy of this whole assembly. And what you can do is you can type in something like times 15 or times 25 and hit the enter key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make 25 copies. So you can see how I was able to real quickly and easily model out this uh, this bridge piece along the edge here. And so then all you have to do when you wanna finish it off is you would just come in here and figure out whatever your last point would be. And then you could erase everything beyond that. So I'm gonna erase out these extras that I created. And all that I would do in this case is I would come in here 
and I would select these two components and I would make them unique. So I would select them by holding the shift key and clicking on them and then I'd click make unique. And then you can come in here and you can delete out these extra pieces and that'll leave you with your end point. Because when you make this unique then it kind of breaks the link between this and the other components. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.